Hey guys, this is tech update number 7. We're going to be talking about weapon pickups today. Uh, this is not the complete system at all, it's just a proof of concept, and then from there I'll dive into actually developing the rest of the technical system to pass uh, the data correctly. This is the main pickup we have, it's also kind of the larger part of the game, um, in sense of like what I actually create as a system, because the fact that like, other things we pick up, um, or that we interact with our static, right? When we choose our class um, and our abilities, it's just a pick on start, and it's just a simple like check, yes, no. These are actually uh, pieces of information that are going to be updating constantly. They require HUD updates and things like that. So this has become the the first big test of the replication system um, and the first more hardcore proof of concept um, that the networking is is expanding outward as we play with all of this stuff. So. The first thing I'm going to dive into talking about a little bit is that we're not actually passing actors all the way through. Um, that causes a lot of problems. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to be passing structs. Um, a lot of you that worked with me before know that I, I love this. I love structs very much. Um, and after reading a lot more online, I've, I've learned more about uh, unique, m more advanced ways to, to use structs appropriately, like storing structs within structs, which I've done before. Um, but now storing... Um, meshes and how to pull that properly back out because eventually we are going to need to socket this stuff onto the character. Um, I'm not doing that right now because uh, A, I have only done that I think once before and it takes a while um, so I'm going to focus my time on systems development right now. The more important thing about the struct data um, is that obviously all of the math that I need to pull from is, is available um, so later on when I come back in here and, and begin updating um, ammo type or damage or fire rate things like that can be done really easily um, I have not coded that in uh, the main reason why is two front one is for whatever reason um, all of this damage code got deleted despite the fact that it was saved and backed up uh, I'm not really sure where that went but that's my fault so you know obviously uh, so I fixed that put that back in and then again I spent a lot of time trying to get this to pass on um, like a full on actor. Um, I use like child classing and things like that. It wasn't working properly. Um, so I just switched to moving everything to struct data. Works well. Um, really quick, just going to pop in here. We're going to see that the, the UI is still there. There's a new UI in the bottom right. We're just going to ignore that for now. We'll come back to that. We're going to see first that the robber can't pick up weapons, but you can also see the weapons don't do anything to interrupt the robber. So they just, they exist, right? Physically visible, but not uh, interactable. Uh, the police, right? We can see when he walks over the Mac again. Like the socket's not changing. Look to that bottom right, right? We can see down here, right? We've got the this really poor <laughs> JPEG that I'm still working with um, in this 10 and 50. And we can see up here, right? The other player has has no change. Uh, we'll see the same thing with the M4, right? We can see a change to that UI, uh, no change here. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm showing off a UI change is because uh, I've become say me, right, personally, um, have become very reliant on print string, and print string and networking does not generally work super well as a great way to debug and test things. Um, so in, instead I have to, not have to, but I, I am now creating HUD elements to help display that information so we can see that not only um, <coughs> is the struct data being passed as far as like the thumbnail, right, but the the clip and ammo size are being passed, which means that this update ammo function is running on the character. So uh, it's basically a two front proof. One is that, yeah, the player is picking up a weapon, but also more importantly, the data of the character's attributes are also changing, which is uh, really important for the next step of systems development. So uh, where do I go from here? Um, obviously, now what I do is I create um, a better firing system. Um, than just attempting to shoot right now I create fire rate cooldown um, pull reload stuff in um, move projectile speed uh, to creating uh, the actor class right pull from bullets and have them have their own data <coughs> stored as well and probably put that on probably on construct um, so that's where I go from here the last thing I want to mention is that uh, obviously the other pickups in the game do exist, but they, they don't require as much technical work, so I'm not putting time on those. I'm focusing on this. Um, 
that's it for the video. Real quick for a disclaimer, these are not my models. These are free models off Turbo Squid. Yep. Um, they will not be in the game. We're not using them in the game. Most importantly, because we didn't make them, but, but also because of the fact that they don't match our aesthetic. So if you're watching this, I, I did not model these weapons. They're free on Turbo Squid. <clears throat> and uh, they're just for testing purposes, <laughs> as are these uh, drawings that I'm I'm just using for now. Uh, we'll get, you know, as we move forward, these will be elements that will be created by the art team. So that's it for now, guys. I will probably talk to you soon as I keep pushing this through. Uh, as I said from week one that we've been doing this, uh, multiplayer makes everything <laughs> a lot harder for me. Um, so things that normally don't take me as long are taking a while um, and testing things out also. So thanks. Hope your summers are going well. Uh, we've got like four to five weeks before we all come back, but I'm looking forward to that as well. So take care.